and budget, Mick Mulvaney, gloated that it was, quote, kind of cool that he was the one who got to shut down the government. Kind of cool, he said on Friday in a radio interview. As I speak tonight, all Americans know there is no such thing as a good shutdown. All of us in this body strongly believe that we must end this shutdown. We mark the first year anniversary of the Trump presidency with the Trump shutdown and his now infamously saying on May 2nd that our country needs a good shutdown. But this shutdown has damaging, even potentially devastating effects on millions of America, our troops whose pay will be delayed, our families who rely on the Children's Health Insurance Program and who will soon be without funding, community health center patients whose source of health care will be closed, government workers who keep our nation running every day, the disaster relief victims in Puerto Rico who will be denied relief along with their fellow Americans, they are Americans, in Texas and Florida. This shutdown is not a good shutdown and it is not kind of cool. And I beg to differ with the majority leader who has just come to the floor in saying that Democrats agree with everything that is in the measure that came to us from the House because as damaging as a shutdown is, so is a continuing resolution, corrosive and destructive to good government. We've been through three continuing resolutions each a month in as many months. Now a fourth in the fourth month is proposed. That is no way to run a government. Whether it is three weeks or four weeks, at the end of that so-called continuing resolution, a short-term temporary patch, we will be in the same place as we are today. But the good news is that we have bipartisan consensus not only that we must end the shutdown, but also on each of those issues that is necessary to reach consensus on a longer term, full fiscal year package. That is also why a continuing resolution and the measure that came to us from the House is completely inadequate because it continues to fund those programs at the same level as the previous year, 2017. And the Pentagon, the Secretary of Defense, our military leaders have told us unequivocally and clearly that those levels are inadequate to our national defense. I hope there's bipartisan consensus among us on the Armed Services Committee as, and in the chamber as a whole that we need a strong national defense both military and non-military funding. And there needs to be an increase in that funding, which the bill presented last night did not provide. So far from agreeing with every provision in that four-week extension, it is inadequate. It would be irresponsible and reprehensible for this body to go along with it, and that's why Four of our Republican colleagues joined us in opposing it. We're all here tonight, ready to vote, but we're waiting on one man, President Trump, to finally be the leader that we expect and demand the president to be. The leader that Donald Trump himself in 2013 said that President Obama should be in ending we're stopping the shutdown then. He said that, in effect, the buck would stop with President Obama, just as now it does 
with President Trump. And in President Obama's case, his party did not control the two branches and houses of the Congress. The Republicans control the House, they control the Senate, and they control the White House. They are in charge, they are responsible, and they are dysfunctional in disarray and division. There have been weeks, indeed months, of difficult negotiation. And I am not here to blame my Republican colleagues. I think they have worked, many of them, in good faith, and that's the reason that we have arrived at bipartisan agreements on the need for increases in defense spending, both military and non-military, on the need for the children's health insurance program to be reauthorized, along with community health centers, needs of veterans and pensions, and disaster relief. 